Hello there, Ben Bowers, the Spirit Specialist, and I am here today to talk to you about the third and final release of a limited edition series of bottlings from Lindor's Abbey. This is the Lindor's Casks of Lindor's, uh, and this is the uh, matured exclusively in Oloroso sherry casks. So behind me, you'll see the other two that were released because um, I've kept one aside for an event, more on which later. Um, so we have Lindor's or Lindor's Abbey. Um, this is their core bottling, um, which is made up of three types of uh, maturation. Spirit matured in, we have ex bourbon casks, we have uh, red wine casks, STR red wine casks, and then we have Oloroso sherry casks. So I'm not gonna try and pick them up, all three of them at the same time, but that's the ex bourbon. This is the XSTR red wine cask. So you can see a slight pink tinge on here. And then this, which has just been released today at the time the video comes out, is the Oloroso Sherry. What a color on that. Um, I'm not quite sure because of the lights above. It really doesn't pick up the, the intensity on camera. It, I mean, it looks pretty dark there. It's even more intense here. And there's a real rich kind of slightly red character to it, which when I first picked it out, I could have thought, you know, actually, is this the red wine cask? Um, but it's just an absolutely stunning color. So those three then make up the core bottling. Um, and you can almost see a little bit of each of the three colors within that. So um, like I say, this is the, the basically the three components of what makes the core. It was a limited bottling at slightly higher alcohol strength. You'll get all that information when I give you the background information about Lindor's itself. Um, so before I tell you what this tastes like, I've not even opened it yet, um, but this is gonna be open for a tasting event. Um, let me give you the background information about Lindor's, the Abbey, the owners, and the whiskey. Lindor's Abbey is a Tyronesian monastery built in the late 12th century on the edge of Newburgh, Fife. It's claimed that the first written reference to whiskey being produced in Scotland relates to the Abbey, as the Exchequer Rolls of 1494 list that, by order of King James IV, eight bowls of malt be presented to the monk Friar John Corr to produce aqua vitae. It's thought that Friar Corr resided at Lindor's, and it is more than likely that distilling of some form was taking place well before this date, and as such the Abbey has become known as the spiritual home of Scotch whiskey. Now a ruin, the grounds and a neighbouring farm became to be owned by the Mackenzie Smith family, who held the title of Custodians of Lindors. Drew Mackenzie Smith and his wife Helen had long wanted to build a distillery to honour the historical links to whisky in their grounds, and excavation began in 2013. However, archaeological investigations delayed full construction until 2016, with a visitor centre opening in October 2017 and distillation commencing in December of that year. The water for whisky production is taken from a borehole near the distillery, meaning the water used is from the same source as would have been used at the Abbey. Barley is sourced from the nearby Fife region, and in June 2019, local farms have supplied concerto barley from fields that would have been in Abbey lands. While most new whisky distilleries have produced a gin to provide an ongoing revenue stream while spirit was maturing in cask, Lindor's Abbey instead released an aqua vitae based on recipes found at the Abbey. Whereas originally this would have been essentially new make spirit infused with herbs found in the local area, Lindor's Abbey aqua vitae uses a blend of herbs and spices including Douglas fir and sweet Sicily along with a maceration of dried fruits. The distillery has one wash still and two spirit stills, which are dubbed sister stills. This allows for experimentation with differing cuts to produce a variety of different flavour profiles. Maturation also takes place with a vast array of cask types, with a combination of ex bourbon casks, STR or shaved, toasted, and recharred wine barrels, and Oloroso sherry butts being used for their first release. The Casks of Lindor's is a series highlighting the component parts that make up the core single malt release from the distillery. The first bottling was a whisky matured solely in ex bourbon barrels. The second edition was matured exclusively in shaved, toasted and recharred barrels that previously held Spanish Rioja red wine. And this third and final limited edition relief spends its life only in Oloroso sherry butts. It's bottled at a chosen strength across the range of 49.4% ABV and no chill filtration takes place with no colour being added. Right then, so let me try and get this open. This has got one of those really awkward, can I actually do it? That's a first. So these particular wrappers on here, where you have, you've got a perforated bit that you peel downwards vertically in order to open it, 99 times out of 100, 
doesn't come off in one piece and then you kind of have to peel the rest of it off and it gets underneath your thumbnails and everything like that. I don't know what it is about these particular seals on bottles, but they drive me absolutely nuts. And this is the first time, or well, first time in a long time, that I've actually managed to open it properly. Um, so the reason that I'm opening this, I've just received my allocation, which is not a lot. There are a limited number of bottles of this available, although it doesn't say how many bottles are on here. The reason I'm opening this is I actually kept one of each aside, these ones here, of the uh, casks, casks of Lindor's Bourbon, casks of Lindor's STR, with the Oloroso. I have a bottle of the core. I also have their uh, Aquavitae, which is what they brought out before the while the whiskey was maturing. They never did a gin, they did the Aquavitae, which was based on the um, old recipes that the monks were using, which is essentially new make spirit infused with fruits and herbs and spices. And it's, it's a very distinctive, very unusual spirit. Um, so when I was working for Gordon McPhail prior to, open it, uh, prior to opening the shop, we were actually very briefly, or I, I don't think we were actually officially UK distributors for them, but we were in discussions to be the distributor for them in the UK. So we used to um, talk about the Aquavita quite a lot, I included it on a few sort of tasting tables and festivals and tasting events and things like that. And it's it's not a gin, it's not a whiskey, it's its own very unique spirit. It goes brilliantly with ginger ale as a, as a highball. And that's how they serve it at the distillery. I was fortunate enough to have um, a couple of days at the distillery during a GNM team meeting. Beautiful place, absolutely amazing. Really good team there as well. We had a really good kind of cocktail night. Um, so what I plan to do is now that we have initially five of, basically five of the first releases from Lindor's, is I've spoken to Murray, who's the sales guy, and what I'm planning to do, I don't have a date locked in yet. So if you're watching this relatively soon after this video has been launched, keep an eye on the social medias. If you're on my mailing list, that will go out to the mailing list as well. Is my intention is to have a tasting of Lindor's as a collection. So I'm going to get some new make and we're going to have new make. We'll have Aqua Vitae, we'll have the core bottling, and then we will have the three cast components that make up that core bottling. Not quite sure which order to do it. I don't know whether to do the core bottling first and then the three, or we do the three and then finish on the core because that's the end result of it. Don't know yet. I haven't quite figured it out. But that is the plan to have six Lindors from new make all the way through to the core which is their collection. Basically what they've released to the market now, now that we now have the third of the three. So as you, as I was talking about earlier, as you saw, the color is absolutely incredible. Bottled at 49.4%, exclusively Oloroso casks. I believe first fill as well, and it must be because there's no chill filtration, no coloring. It's gotta be first fill, just based purely on that color. So straight on the nose, as you might hope, rich and full and fruity, very raisiny, now this is still pretty young, don't forget. You know, we're looking at, I think about five years-ish. Um, now this is a, a marriage of casks as well. So this isn't a single cask bottling. And it's possible that actually the casks were slightly different years to kind of like get a little bit of a balance out. But there's still a little bit of heat on it. You know, 49.4, it's not huge, but we are starting to get a little bit more intensity of alcohol coming through. So there is some heat coming through, but it's actually working quite nicely with that Raisin Sultana, Prunes, dark fruit notes. Little bit of spiciness there, but it's more fruit than spice. I didn't get any water, and I don't know if it might need it, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes on the palate. The nose still feels quite tight, but it's got so much going on. It's tight, but concentrated that I'd love to see what this is like at a much older age, you know, like 10, 12, 15, that sort of thing. There's bags going on in here, but it feels like it's still, it's still got more to give. And it might just be that a drop of water does actually help that. Now, I didn't get any water, but I've got my wireless Bluetooth head, um, microphone on, so I can nip out and just you can just stare at an empty screen. But let's, let's try it first, let's see if it needs it. Ooh, pruny, pruny, prunes. Oh, wow. So I've got young kids and um, in their lunch boxes, we often put uh, bear yo-yos, they're called. And it's that kind of concentrated flattened down fruit that they then put into a spiral so it looks a bit like a yo-yo. But it's this 
I think what they do is they dehydrate the fruit and they basically press it in so that it, it looks looks a bit like an elastic band when you roll the whole thing out. But it's super, super concentrated fruit. And this is like, and my kids probably wouldn't even touch it with a barge pole, but like prune bear yo-yos, prune uh, winders, those sorts of like fruit strips that kids get in their lunch boxes. This is a prune and raisin version. Really intense dark fruit in there rich, full, there's a good mouthfeel to it, and the heat from the alcohol works brilliantly. I think I am gonna get a bit of water, so what I'll do is I'll carry on talking while I'm walking, and hopefully this microphone still picks it up. It, I, I'm kind of torn as to whether it needs water or not, because I actually think the balance of the, the heat from the alcohol, I'm trying to find, where's my water gone? Oh, oh there it is, right, so I'm, um, the heat from the alcohol is is only it's it's kind of not overpowering, but it's there and it's a little bit more noticeable than I think it needs to be. But I do suspect that if I do put some water in, it's going to actually knock it down a little bit too much. So I am literally going to put here I am hello, I am literally going to put a drop. That's all it's going to be because I think it's going to need the merest amount. There we go. Oh, I'll put two drops in. Oh, I've overdone it now. I put two drops in. I don't think it needs a lot. I, I think it need, literally needs to be the equivalent of like 48%. Because the concentration of the fruit is so intense that that higher alcohol strength works almost perfectly, but not quite. And I, I just need to know whether it's there or thereabouts. So now on the nose, there's a little bit more of a spiciness coming through. I wouldn't say pepper, but kind of like very soft, dry chili flakes. Not quite nutmeg, not quite cinnamon. It's a little bit drier than that. It's not a sweet spice. You're still getting those bags of fruit, but you're getting just a, a very, very slight, gentle hint of chili pepper. It's just that little, those literally two drops have just released a touch more spice coming through. Oh, yes. Mmm. You're getting more raisin, you're getting more Christmas cake, still intense fruit. It does help just with a drop. It's literally, it's bottled at 49.4, and they've kept that through the three bottlings to maintain a consistency. Now, I can't remember what I thought of the other two when I was trying them. I know I did a, I did a video on the STR. I can't remember if I did one on the bourbon. One or the other, I think I missed a video out. So they've all they've done them all at 49.4. And I get why they've done that, to maintain consistency. This is a series, this is the ABV. But the Oloroso Sherry almost needs to be like 48.4. And it might be one of those where, and we'll know when we do the tasting, it might be a case of, do you know what? The bourbon needs to be, is fine at 49.4. The STR is actually could have been 51.4 and the Oloroso Sherry needs to be 48.4. It just, it's ever so slightly too alcoholic, but by the merest, merest amount, literally 1%, one drop, two drops in there, and it just opens it out that little bit more, but you still get that really good pairing of alcohol, heat, and fruit. It's just there's a touch more fruit, a touch more complexity. It's just opened up ever so slightly. So it does not need a lot of water, and it still drinks really well without. It, I think it's improved with the smallest amount in your glass. I absolutely, mm, I love that intense fruitiness in there. I think that's really, really good. Now, unfortunately, I can't remember what the other two were like. Uh, and I could do them side by side now, but it's early and it would be kind of a spoiler for when we actually do the tasting. The tasting will be an online tasting. So if you're watching from outside of Yorkshire and you can't get into Howden, it will be an online tasting. I'm hoping that I can get somebody from the distillery to join us. Be it Murray, who um, I wouldn't say is a good friend of mine, but I get on really well. We've met a couple of times. Really, really nice bloke. Uh, it might be Murray. Yeah, I mean, if I can get Drew on board, that would be absolutely amazing. But the guy's a very, very busy man and, you know, I can appreciate. But who knows? But hopefully somebody from the distillery will be joining us. It will be an online tasting. So you will have the sample pack with a Zoom call to join into, and we can go through the range. So like I say, hopefully, unless I can get something even more special, but I've already got the Aquavitae, the core bottling, and the three, and then it's just what that sixth one's gonna be. And 
with any luck, it's going to be new make because then we can see where it goes from in the various directions. So that is an absolute belter. The price is $54.99. I completely forgot, but fortunately I've got one STR left on the shelf and that's $54.99 and it's all the same price. He says with no confidence whatsoever, but I'm absolutely sure it's $54.99. And that is a belter. If you like, I mean, this is up there with Glen Farkas 105, Abelara Bunar, which is, you know, twice the price, nearly. Big, full, rich sherry bombs. Uh, that English whiskey, if you saw the review I did of that for the Rolls Royce Enthusiast Club, it's up there with those massive sherry supernovas. It's I, I love that style. It's so Christmassy. It's such a good whiskey. It's absolutely brilliant. So um, it is available. I've not got many, and it's entirely possible that by the time you look at the website, it's gone. But go and check it, www.spiritspecialist.com. I might still have some left. That one is going into the tasting. I've got a customer that always, always already has asked for a couple of bottles now that he knows that I've got it in. So I might not have any left. So go and check it out. Go on, go, well, when I've finished, go and check it out. Um, and keep your eye on the social media pages. If you're on the mailing list, you will get a mailing, uh, mailing head up uh, when tickets do go live to purchase. Um, if you're not on the mailing list, go onto the website. At the bottom of every page, there's a, a button. I think it says join now or keep me in the know or something like that. Put your details in there and that will get you on the mailing list as well. So that's me done. Fantastic whiskey. Well done, Lindors. You've done it again. Absolute belter. I know I shall see you at the next one. Cheers. Cheers.